Water like at Papa and G's house, Tristan. Sulfur. Look up, Leo. Look up there. Go over there by your brother so I can take a picture. Oops, sorry. All right, look at me. Look, Leo. All right, guys, can everyone hear me in the back pretty well? All right, perfect. What you guys are standing in now is what is called a hard rock mine. This mine was operational from 1898 until 1906. What they would be looking for in this hard rock mine, if y'all can take a quick look up there, uh, that is that white quartz rock, and inside of that white quartz rock is where the gold would be found down here in this mine. Now a big piece of that white quartz rock they would be finding would be about five to six inches to around a foot in a regular hard rock mine. But this big opening that y'all are looking at here, this is where the world's largest piece of white quartz rock was ever pulled out of a hard rock mine in the world. It actually expanded 22 feet wide from side to side, and it stretched all the way down to the end of that cavern right there to right above your heads. These are actually leftover bridges from the original vein of quartz that they found, and there's actually forty um, estimated forty thousand dollars worth of gold in each single one of these bridges that they left over. And in a single day of mining down here in this one big area that y'all are looking at, they pulled out fifty-five point four pounds worth of gold in a single day, which is actually more than a million dollars in today's gold prices. Now y'all are more than welcome to take pictures of this, whatever y'all would like. We'll slowly make our way down these steps once everyone is ready. Rails, babies, use the rails. That's a big rock. All right, come this way. Just step over here, Bubba. Move it this way. Ew. So follow him. Follow him. Follow Stay him. to the left. Look at that buddy, Bubba. Come on, let's go all the way down to stand next to him so people can come down here and get closer to him. Right here. We'll let this tour go ahead and pass before we go ahead and get So, would you be able to work in something like this, Tristan? Huh? Hmm? Would you be able to work in something like this? Maybe not this deep. No, this is where they did to find the gold. And they dug all this out. Too cold. Are you excited? Is it fun? I've seen a lot of kids. Yeah, these have been here. How long has this been here? Since 1898. 1898. 1898 was whenever this mine was started. The gold rush actually started here in the 1820s. Wow. They actually started uh, going into the rivers and streams in the 1820s, and they went to hydraulic mining, and then they like went to hard rock mining from here. Wow. It's that rainwater. It seeps through the ground, and it'll eventually make its way down here. That, that rainwater could be two or three months old, actually. Depending on how long it takes for it to make it through the surface down here. You got to quit. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. But all right, guys, if y'all want to take a quick look over here, that is that white quartz rock that they would be drilling for down here. 
how they would get this out. They would chisel out holes into the sides of that rock. Once they had those holes chiseled out, they would completely fill each hole full of dynamite. Once they did that, they would actually tie all the fuses together, they would light them, and they would blast all of that rock out. And once they blasted all of that rock out, they would put it inside of a mine cart, and they would send it out back to the old mill that we used to have. And once that rock reached that mill, they would take that rock and they would send it over giant crushers, and it would crush that rock up to a very fine powder. And once that rock was in a powder form, they would send it over hot pools of mercury, and that's actually how they separated the gold from the rock down here. And now the reason that they had to do this is because they had a special name for this gold that they would be finding inside of this mine. It was called flower gold. And the reason that it was called flower gold is because each piece of gold that they would be finding inside of this rock right there would be the size of a grain of cooking flour. So it actually take around two to three tons of that rock right there just to equal a single ounce of gold down here, down here in this mine. Wow. Alright guys, as we make our way down, uh, be sure to watch your heads on this rock as we make our way down. Hang on to the railings. That's how G and Papa get their water. Rainwater comes down, but it hits a sulfur patch on its way. <laughs> Come down, one more, guys. Come here, Bubba. Here, y'all stand in here, I can picture you. Lincoln. Bubba. Yeah. 
I got this point to cover on today. We cover about a quarter of a mile of this mine. We go about 200 feet underneath the surface. But what you're looking at here, this mine actually drops 800 feet deeper than where we're standing. And there's actually four more miles of tunnels underneath our feet that have been completely filled up with water since the early 20th century. But now the reason that this mine would actually begin to fill up with water is y'all may have noticed that waterfall out there. And that waterfall was made by accident back in the day by one of our miners. They were actually drilling against the face of that rock and accidentally struck the bottom of a well. So now that water actually flows through here 365 days a year. And that's why they had to keep this water out because how they did that, they had a kid running this water pump about 8 to 12 years old. They would actually have to keep this water pumping out for 12 hours a day and they would get paid a single quarter to do that job for the entire day. So that was the safest job on the mine for the kids to do, so that's why they had been doing that. And actually, we have to keep this water pumping out to this day where y'all are actually standing where we get to fill out of the around the month's time down here. Are there animals on the water Yeah, yeah, that's all completely filled up with water. That light down there is actually five feet underneath the water. Wow. You just lose depth perception from up here. That light yeah, is very, five feet under the water. Once everyone is ready, y'all are more than welcome to take pictures whenever y'all would like, no rush. Once everyone is ready, I'll just go. That's crazy. Do you think it's cool? Yeah. Yeah? What do you think, Bubba? Not too much. Here, y'all go stand right here. All of y'all go stand right here. I'll put it here back in. I'll stand over here so I get a picture. This way. So I can see y'all in the side of the mine. Okay, right there. Look what this way. All right. Leo, come here. Don't be scared, baby. Isn't it cool? Huh? Oh, y'all see the tracks from where the rail parts were going? Look at the little river going down. You want to touch it? Okay. So right behind you, right over here. Maybe an alligator in there. It's probably pretty clean water after it filters through all this. Yeah, it is. It looks like a It looks like a Yeah, we can make our way down there. Be sure to watch your heads as we make our way down to about the end of the shortest parts of the mountain. Watch your head, Bubba. Look up there. Look at all the holes they had to drill. That big opening that y'all are looking at right here, that is called a stoke. It was made by this drill right here called a stoker drill. Oh, look at that. The first air power drill that we would get inside of this mine. It was a 150 pound steel drill and it had two major problems to it. One major problem is that it could only drill one direction, which is actually straight up, and that's why you're all looking at that big hole right there. How they would do that is they would lean a ladder up against this rock, and they would lean a single 2x6 across each face. They would put one miner up on that 2x6. Another miner would lift this big drill up, and they would actually have two miners on a single 2x6 drilling straight up into the face of the rock. Now keep in mind, hard hats actually weren't invented until the early 1920s, so they were working out here with no hard hats masks for any safety regulations whatsoever. But now the reason that, or the major problem that this drill created is if y'all can see that shiny stuff on the sides of this rock right there, that is called silica. And now whenever the drill would break up that rock, it would create this dust and would give these miners what's called a miner's call. Yeah. It would actually be like breathing in tiny shards of glass and actually begin to turn your skin blue in about three weeks' time span. <laughs> It's dangerous to be a miner. Watch your heads. Y'all go out in front of me 
so get you on my video. Y'all go out in front of me so I can get you on video. Go catch up with daddy. Go catch up with daddy. Come here, it's right here. Scoot over there, baby. Guys, I want to take a quick look on this back wall here. That is the basic dynamite pattern that our miners had back in the day. Once they had all these holes chiseled out, what they would do is they would take that dynamite, they would stick it in that hole, they would take this wooden rod right here, they would push that dynamite down until every single hole was completely filled up. Once they did that, they would tie all those fuses together, they would light them, they would yell fire in the hole. Now whenever they yelled fire in the hole, they let each miner in the mine know that they had exactly three minutes to either make it to a safety tunnel or outside of the mine before these blasts went off. Now y'all may notice these light bulbs in here. We actually had light bulbs back in the day inside of our mine. They were the old traditional style Edison light bulbs. But the one major problem that they had is that they were running a series circuit. So that means if one light bulb in this mine goes out, every single one of them in the mine goes out. So actually back here in these blast tunnels, this is the amount of light that these miners would be working with down here. Oh no. This lighter right here emits more light than the traditional Edison style light bulb. Um, at the beginning of the day, each miner would get three candles for the entire day. The first miner would use his first three candles, and the next miner would use his last three. Hopefully they'd have enough light at the end of the day to make it out once they were done working. Now the reason I'm showing you guys this is, once they lit that dynamite, I don't know if any of y'all have ever tried to take off running with a candle or not, but it just goes completely dark. And now these miners would actually have to feel their way through these blast tunnels in this pitch black darkness to find their way to one of these safety tunnels or outside of the mine before these dynamite blasts went off down here. I'm turning these lights on. Is scary? I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in today's time, it'd be a lot better. I'm fun. Yeah. Get out of the mine or run away. This is really fun. Because one of those safety problems is right next to that stove field. Get out of there. We just talked about it. Once that safety tunnels. They won't get rid of it. That's one of the safety tunnels. They would actually have to get back once they reach that safety tunnel. Yeah. They would have to get back there, they would have to bend their knees, cover their ears, and they would actually have to exhale air and make a sound. Because if you don't make a sound and that shock wave hits you, it will actually collapse your lungs on impact. And if you're not ready for it, it will actually just blast you up against the rock. And more than likely, more than likely it hurts you very seriously. Yes. That's pretty cool, huh? Oh. Come on, Tris. Would you want to do it back in the day, Tristan? Look, those are the wagons. Look at me. Look at me. All right, y'all go. Over here. We'll get a picture. Stand right there. I'll get one down here. Stay there. Look. Look, Tristan. All right. Watch your feet. <laughs> Okay, let's go down here out of the way. But how would they see the map with the pitch black? Because it's a lot of it. 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 It's a Alright guys, this drill that you're looking at here, this is called a drifter drill. It's much more efficient than the stuff drill because instead of drilling just in one direction, it's connected to this metal rod right here. So you drill right into the face of the rock, you would actually shoot water out of the end of this chisel here. So it died down that miner's cost, that would no longer be such an issue down here in the mine. 
However, the major problem that this drill created is that it was actually very, very loud. Now, this drill is underwater for 85 to 90 years down here. It runs on air compression, and it actually does still work. And I will turn it on for you today so you can actually listen to it. It runs on 5 to 10% of its original power, but I must warn you, it's still pretty loud. <laughs> so what you all may want to do is wait a couple of years for just a short second. Have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever once I turn it off, I want you to listen to the echo. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Echo. That's cool. Ready? Three, two, one. That's the echo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just five to ten of this original power truck and kind of see the problem here. Back in the day, on the full power, they would actually have five to six of these drills running in the exact same space like you're standing in right now. If you're working down here in this drill, you would actually begin to go down for about a two weeks time span of working down here, and they only got paid an extra quarter to do so. They got paid a dollar fifty instead of a dollar twenty-five just to lose their viewing down here. <laughs> so we want to welcome to go up here and take pictures of this whatever y'all would like. All I ask is you please do not turn it on, I'll definitely know. <laughs> You want to take a picture with it? Come on, stand next to it. That's what you want to do. Go right there. Turn around, bud. Now go over there like you were controlling it. Look at me. Okay. Come here, little one. Oh, you want to take one, Leo? Look at me. Okay. All right, look at me, Lee. Okay. Yeah, let me see. Take a picture. Just don't stop the video. I'm a kid. 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 You want to go right out there with Bubba? No. And get your video? Uh, that's it! Ooh. You right? Yeah, luckily like I wasn't. Holding my head to me. Oh, you hit your head? Yeah. Uh. Alright guys, this final job I'm going to talk to you okay. about today. He was the highest paid worker on the mine whenever he had to come here. Oh, he got paid $3.50 for the day whenever he had to come out. His job title, he was called the safety man. And his job was? Whenever they would go back there in those blast tunnels, they would tie all that dynamite together. They would light it. Everybody would take off running, get to a safety tunnel or outside of the mine and brace for the shockwave to go off. But eventually no blast ever went off. So what they would have to do is, they would actually have to clear out every single miner in this mine. They would send out one guy. He was the safety man. He had this metal rod right here with a spear on the end. And his job was, he would go back to those blast tunnels like y'all were in earlier. He would take this metal rod up here. He would stick it in those holes. And you actually have to drill out each piece of dynamite one by one, hoping that it did not go off on him. That's why he was the highest paid worker on the mine, and believe it or not, in the eight year period that this mine was operational, there was no documented deaths of this job inside of this mine. There are actually only two in the eight year period. One is from a runaway mine part, and the second one is from that stoke drill that I was talking about earlier. But with no hard hat safety regulations or anything like that, there are only two documented casualties down here in this mine. Which I find very impressive. Yeah. Now we can make our way up here to so the stairs. Be sure to hang on your right hand side because it gets kind of wet over here on your left. We'll slowly yeah. make our way up. Would you want that job, Tristan? No? I don't want it. You got paid three bucks? Thank <laughs> you.
right, hold on to the thing. Down the hole? Which job would you want? <laughs> ah. <laughs> the job where you tell everybody what to do? Thank you. 